Isaiah chapter 2, verse number 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. And the church said, Amen. 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 You can be seated this evening. I think if there's anything that the, the Lord desires from us, and folks go to church for many reasons, many different reasons, not everybody that comes to church is there to grow in the Lord and to be a stronger Christian. People go to church for many different reasons. You'd be surprised why people come to church on Sunday morning or maybe even on a Wednesday night. It's not always of their desire that they might get closer to the Lord. But I think if there's anything that the Lord desires from me and you tonight as people of God is that we walk in the light of the yeah. Lord. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scripture teaches us that he, um, the man that is saved has become new creature. All things are passed away. All things, old things are passed away. All things have become new. And we need to walk in that newness of life. The scripture says there in verse number five, and literally, O house of Jacob, that they would walk in the light of Jehovah by acknowledging, I believe, Jesus Christ, the day spring from on high. Amen. Hallelujah to God today. Now, the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, is broken up into different divisions throughout the entirety of uh, his prophetic book. But in chapters 1 and 2 and the earlier chapters of, of the book of Isaiah deals with the judgment that is coming upon Judah and upon Israel. And Isaiah is given a prophecy that the, the desolation is coming and uh, the prophets are calling out. They are uh, prophets that are uh, related with one another, with Jeremiah. And they were cohorts one uh, with another and prophesying during the same time of the destruction of Israel and of Judah and Jerusalem. And uh, Isaiah prophesies that destruction is coming unless that Judah turns her way and begins to follow the Lord, we read in the beginning of chapter 2 there, he is telling of a prophetic time, I believe, that will take place during the reign of Jesus Christ in the millennium that is to come, when that there will be no war anymore. They'll beat their, uh, their swords into plowshares, and uh, a time that is coming upon the earth when he is in complete control. But I want to look at the things not just with the physical Israel, but con uh, concentrating on the spiritual Israel tonight, which is you and me today. But what I want to look at is I want to take my verse from that verse number five when the writer calls out and says, O house of of Jacob. He's talking to the church. He's talking to Israel. He's talking to the physical Israel, but he's also speaking to the spiritual Israel, you and me today. Oh, house of Jacob. And then he calls out, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. When I look at that, the first thing that catches my attention is the invitation. In particular, here is an invitation that the people of God, the very people of Jehovah, have to be invited to come and to walk in the presence of the Lord. It seems natural that they would live in God and that they would seek God and rejoice in Him and learn of Him, seeing that He is their own God. It is peculiar to me that the people of God have to be invited to come and walk and live. It is a time in which we're living today. We don't have time to preach for the lost, for having to preach to those that are of God's own house to come and to walk in the life of the Lord today. I 
think it is in a peculiar invitation. But even more peculiar is an invitation is that it comes from the other nations to the house of Jacob. <clears throat> the word of the Lord goes forth from Jerusalem and it converts the nations. And then he goes back to the people from which it first came who preached it in the beginning. And the parallel is found when the invitation comes to those of us who are already believers. Notice that many times the invitation comes from those that we minister to ourselves, people that we have ministered to and in encourage and they give their life to the Lord and now they're serving the Lord and they have to get and call upon us, hey, won't you come and let's walk in the presence and in the light of Jehovah God. It is a peculiar invitation when those that we have preached to have to preach to us to come and walk in the goodness of God. It is a parallel when there is a move among God's people that we have preached to and that we have encouraged. It is like a movement among dry bones when it says, O oh, house of Jacob, come house of Jacob, come people of God. Those of you that call yourself a Christian, you need to come to the house of the Lord. You need to come and walk in the light of the Lord. Oh, that God's people would walk in the light of the Lord again today. It is a peculiar invitation from those of whom we have ministered to before. It is a peculiar invitation from new converts. <clears throat> You've uh, seen a new convert, you know, when you first found the Lord. How excited that you was. You was inviting everybody to come to church every, every time the doors was open. You was excited to be there. But after there's many that after they've been in church, and they've been saved for a long time, the zeal and the fire kind of dies down and becomes a smoldering ember. But thank God the invitation comes from those new converts that once they get saved, they're encouraging and calling upon those older saints and urging them to come and creates a joy with a gentle rebuke oh, that the house of Jacob would come and walk in the presence and the light of the Lord. And then it comes also a peculiar invitation from those saints of God with mutual edification. That's what we do on Sunday morning when we come together. That's what we do on Wednesday night when we come together to edify one another, encourage one another to keep on following after the Lord, to continue to walk in the presence of God, to live under the blessings of the Lord. All that the house of Jacob would walk in the light of the Lord. It is a peculiar invitation and I would and I believe that God desires more of that such invitations are healthy signs if nobody's encouraging us to live better nobody's encouraging us to get closer to God and nobody is encouraging us to get our priorities straight something is wrong but is it, a, it is a healthy sign when we are desiring and calling on people yeah. to come to the house Amen. of the Lord and to walk in the presence of the Lord we are to encourage one another their zeal and fervor by getting together that's why we come together to worship and to sing and to praise the Lord Amen. Amen. <laughs> So there is an invitation. Not only this invitation is not only for the time, the prophetic time to come, and I believe it's coming, and I believe it's soon to come, but I believe that we can live in that light now. I believe that we can walk in that light now. Amen? Yes. Oh, that the house of Jacob would come and walk in the light of the Lord. Let us accept this invitation. Let us walk in the light of of the Lord. There's nothing comparable to this light. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. John said it like this. He said the light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Hallelujah to God. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Oh, that the church would come together. The house of Jacob would come and walk in the light of the Lord. Jesus is that light. He said, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah to God today. And not only that, he said, you're the light of the world. A city that's set upon a hill cannot be hid if your gospel is hid. Paul said it is hid to them that are lost. We are to be the shining light of the gospel Amen. to a lost and a dying world today. No other light is comparable to the light of God, especially for God's own people. Jehovah should be the light of Jacob. 
There's no other walking that is more gladsome. There's no other walking that is more safe than walking in the light of the Lord. No other people are able to walk in the light of God with their eyes open and their feet strengthened and their hearts purified and their actions are the suit of the day. It is because of the light of the Lord. When we are walking in the light of the Lord and we're reflecting, reflecting His light to the world, it's not because that we're good people. It's because we're walking in His light. Walking in his life does good for me and you today. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Walking along the back track or walking along the walking trail in your little jogging outfit, trying to get your heart rate up and trying to live longer and trying to be healthy. That's all good and I wish you the best. But walking in the light of the Lord will keep us better than anything. Amen. 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 Hallelujah to God today. It is in this light that we find the certainty of mind. We don't have to lose our mind. We don't have to make second guesses. Reason makes guesses and confesses that it knows nothing but walking in the light of the Lord. We don't have to walk about in confusion. We don't have to walk about in darkness today. Human authority makes blunders, but it's the revelation of Jesus Christ that makes the difference today. When Jesus turned to his men and he said, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they stood up and they said, some say that you're a prophet. Some say that you're a great preacher. But he said, who do you say that I am, Peter? Peter said, Lord, he said, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven, has revealed it unto you. Those that have received the revelation of Jesus Christ, it is those of us that are walking in the light. Hallelujah. When darkness falls upon the world, and darkness is upon our world today, and it's going to get darker, we got a light to walk by. Hallelujah to God today. Just like the children of Israel in the land of Goshen. When darkness covered the land of Egypt, the Bible said the light shined on the land of Goshen. In about the 14th or 15th chapter of the book of, of uh, Exodus, I believe it's the 14th chapter, you remember the story how that God led them down by Migdal, by the sea, by the banks of the Red Sea, and the, and the Egyptians were pursuing them hotly. And the Bible said that when they saw them coming, they began to murmur and complain to Moses. But the Bible said that that pillar of cloud and pillar of fire moved from in front of Israel and moved over behind them and got between them and the Egyptians. And the scripture says that it was darkness unto the Egyptians, but it was light to the children of Israel. That's what God will do for us today. Hallelujah. Some people use God just like a magic uh, just like a magic lamp, like some kind of genie. I need this. I want that. I want this car. I want that house. But I'm telling you, God is able to come down in the darkness of a oh, sinful man. world and give us a light to walk by that we might be able to live in the light of the Lord today. Amen. Oh, that Jacob would come and walk in the light of the Lord. You see, in this light, we find rest for the conscience because we see Jesus we see Jesus with his perfect sacrifice and his shed blood, that perfect pardon that it procures. We see his perfect righteousness covering us and making us right in the eyes of God. It clears our conscience to know that we're walking in the light of the Lord. Amen? Amen. People with a guilty conscience, people that are always uh, got that guilty feeling, always suspect about something. More than likely, they're not living right outside of church. They're not living right when they shut the doors of their home. But when you're able to live for God and you've got it all laid out before Him and you're walking out, walking in the light of the Lord, your conscience is clear because Jesus has paid the price. He's taken the sin, the guilt of sin away. Not only do we find rest for the conscience, but we find direction for judgment. Judgment that is to come. Hallelujah to God. You see, we see the things of the future in all of its true colors. And we know how to react uh, in reference to them. To sin, to love, to providence, to everything in the future. We learn to know the right way in the wisest course. We discover the hidden snares and are able to be to go around them. We don't have to walk around in darkness. But the scriptures, the psalmist said, His word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Yeah. Hallelujah to God today. How many times has the light of the Lord kept you from falling on your face? Because He was light in a dark time. When the enemy was 
laying snares uh, and the enemy was laying traps. Uh, God walked you around the traps uh, uh, because you could see you had the night vision goggles on because God was led unto you in a dark place. He gives us direction for our, for our life. Then in this light, we find a light for the soul. I tell you what, there's nothing that is more relaxing and more um, comforting to my soul than the presence of the Lord. Yes. You see, He is our personal God. He is our personal Savior. And we are complete in Him. The scripture tells us that uh, all things work together for the good of them that love God. Yeah. That's what he said. Now when it seems, even though it seems like everything's falling apart and you feel like your stress level is above 10 and you feel like that you're about to explode even in those times, I've got to know and understand for whatever reason. I don't know why that I'm where I am today. I may not know what I'm going, why I'm going through what I'm going through today. I don't think the Lord will put on me more than I'm able to stand, but I feel like I ain't going to be able to stand much more. But I put my confidence in knowing that He knows where I'm at. And if I'm walking in the light, He's got my back. I, hallelujah to God today. He is in the light to the soul. As we... As the choir sang, I begin to think back <clears throat> in my early years of just beginning to preach and remembering what a joy it was to go to church. Could not wait. It didn't matter how long I worked. It didn't matter what the day held. It didn't matter what was going on. The, the taste of church was on my lips. I could not wait to get to the house of the Lord. I can remember the old saints are singing and they sang it like they meant it. And they shouted when they sang, not because so somebody could see them, not because their neighbor was doing it, but they did it because that's what they, they did it at home in their private life. They did it at home in their closet because they was worshiping and praising the Lord. I remember uh, oh, the, the Sister Parker and Sister Anna Jean Tilly that the church that I grew up in, we would take off on a song and I knew after about the third course, buddy, we got her to rock and it didn't matter if it was Wednesday night, Tuesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday Sunday night, we get to singing and I get to feeling something up my spine. Some of the greatest memories that I ever had was in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, in a good old-fashioned church service. We need to get back home that the house of Jacob would come and walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. It is a delight to our soul and it's a communion for our heart. We took communion a couple of weeks ago and we've those of you that's been going to Morning Point, we've been taking communion there with the little folks there. And it means a lot to them. It's more than just, it is more than just a process that we involve ourselves in at church. But it is communion, spiritual communion with the Lord. And we show forth the Lord's death until he comes back. When we walk in the light of the Lord, we find communion for our heart because we see God and we feel perfect peace. We see grace and we feel the full assurance of God's grace and his mercy. We see Jesus and we are in conscious union with him. We feel God's spirit and we're working with him. We're workers with the Lord. When I'm behind a pulpit or when I'm behind my wheel of my car, or when I walk into Morning Point, when I walk in the post office, when I walk into Kroger, I am in union with Christ. I'm one of his. I'm one of his children. I'm one of his workers today. We see saints of God and we enjoy the fellowship with those that are of our own people. My prayer tonight is that the Spirit of God will lead each and every one of us to the light of God and that we remain in it, walking quietly in it from day to day. You see, you don't have to make a show on Sunday morning because everybody knows how you live through the week. And when we show something different on Sunday morning than we show them on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday, 
then they label us as fake. They label us as a hypocrite. And they mark our God as not being real. <coughs> Nothing to God. That's why we need to walk in the light of the Lord. No, we ain't perfect, but we ought to be striving to be perfect. The Lord spoke to Abraham and he said, Now walk before me and be thou perfect. I think we need to be walking. And if we'll walk in the light as he is in the light, we'll have fellowship one with another. The psalmist said in 119th chapter of Psalm, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By giving heed thereunto according to thy word. If you live in that word and walk by that word and live by that word, you'll live for God and you'll live in the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ today. So we need to come and let us walk together in this light. Amen? I want to see God's people walking in the light. It shines forever. We're children of the light. Living in the light will prepare us for the things that are coming. It will prepare us not only while preparing us, we're also able to enjoy it. We're able to be blessed by it. We're able to see the glorious brightness of it because the Lamb is the light, John said, of that city. Amen? You see a man that looks toward the light don't see no shadow. I said a man that's looking toward the light don't see no shadow. A man that walks toward the light leaves the darkness behind him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to God. People get in dark because they get in the darkness because they start straying away from the light. They hide in obscure corners and they bury themselves in the nooks and crannies where the rays of the Son of Righteousness can't reach them. And then they close their eyes and they wonder why in the world that things are going wrong in my life and why that I have no light. But if we'll look to the light and walk toward the light, the shadows and the darkness will all be behind us today. A house may be dark, but it's not the fault of the sun. I said a house may be dark, but it's not the sun's fault. Come on. A soul may be dark, but it's not God's fault. Hallelujah to God. He that follows Christ will turn away from the darkness. He'll not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. But the Bible said if our deeds are evil, then that's when we're walking away from God. And we love darkness rather than the light because our deeds are or evil. But when we find the light, hallelujah to God, when we walk in the light as Christ is in the light, we've got fellowship with God. Yes. We've got fellowship with the Son. We've got the fellowship with the Spirit. Oh, that the house of Jacob would come and walk in the light of the Lord. Isaiah is a fascinating, one of the biggest um, volumes, prophetically, one of the major prophets, Major prophets, the major prophets, minor prophets, the major prophets are like Ezekiel and, and uh, Jeremiah and Isaiah. And then, you know, the minor prophets is like uh, Amos and Habakkuk. Not major or minor because they're major, more important, minor because they're not as important. Major because of the volume of the work. That's why Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah have got 40, 50 some chapters to where that, you know, like Obadiah has got one, one chapter. So major works con considered by the works of the volumes. But uh, Isaiah is just a massive work, a beautiful work, and one of the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. But he prophesies in a time to the, to the children of Judah because Israel had already been taken into captivity. And God told Judah, if you don't turn your way, same thing happened to your sister is going to happen to you. And we live in a time to where that I feel like that preachers, whether they know it or not, if they know the Lord, are prophesying to a people that if we don't change our ways, the same thing that happened to our sister, Israel, is going to happen to us. That's right. I believe it's the it's same thing. Everything we see in the, in the physical of Israel, we see in the spiritual with the church, I believe. Yes. Amen. And... Uh, if you remember, Israel fell into captivity by the Babylonians, and then, you know, there was still hope for Judah, but Judah continued on doing the same thing they was on to doing. They kept on coming, playing church, having things, you know, just going about the business, didn't think that it was that important. They still had singing, shouting, carrying on, having worship service, just business as usual until the Chaldeans come, the Babylonians come, took them into captivity. I've I feel like there is a, a dangerous time that we're getting ready to face. Not only as a nation, but as a world. 
And I believe that it is not going to be as a result of who's in the White House or uh, Putin's war on Ukraine or anything else that uh, and all these nations, I believe, will be involved. China will be involved. Russia is going to be involved. We're going to see all these things coming together and playing together. But uh, and and when it when it comes to pass, it's not so much them as it is the hand of the Lord. We live in a time when bad things happen. We say, well, that's the devil. God only does good things. But that's not so. God is in control of everything. And it was God that sent the destruction upon Israel and upon Judah. It was not the Babylonians. The Babylonians couldn't do anything. They couldn't defeat God's people, but it was God that was trying to... Re and it wasn't to destroy them. It was to try to get them to turn around to try to get them to wake up. Amen. We live in such a blessed time. People, church is not important to them anymore. They got too many things. They got too much money. They got too much running. They're blessed too much. And I believe God is going to shake the place together. He's going to shake it apart until we wake up and realize we've been looking at the wrong thing when we need to be looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So it's worth noting. Now, I'm not a, a, a botanist. I'm not a great gardener. I'm not a great green thumb. But I, I love to fool with plants and gardens and, and stuff like that. I've always... Food with that mamma uh, always showed me how to plant flowers, and she had four o'clock. Some of you people that fool with flowers, I love four o'clocks, and, and mamma, you know, we would get the seeds out of there, and I'd go plant my own, and I wished the everything I'd had some seeds from my mamma's four o'clock plants, so I could have, you know, some of hers. But I ordered my own last year and grew me some four o'clocks. Boy, they was pretty, but uh, I didn't really know what I was doing. They didn't come back this year, but I'm gonna try it again. But um, I ordered me and mom some hostas and some different things. And I love to grow a garden, a little bit of this and that. And I ain't no big time farmer, but, you know, I enjoy those things. But one thing that I have noticed, and especially if you have plants in the house, you'll notice it even more. But if you plant, if you set a plant in the window, in the morning sun or the evening sun or whatever, and it gets good and hot in that window, you know what that plant will do? It will lean toward the window. And the plants that I've had in the past that I've had the window, once they would lean so far, I would turn it around, and it wouldn't be long. It'd lean back over. What it's doing, it's, it's gathering its strength and that nourishment from the sun. Amen. We ought to be leaning toward the Lord rather than leaning toward the world. And if you've noticed how that you take that same plant that is fully green and beautiful colors and you set it over in a corner where it can't get no sunlight. You set it in the darkness or, or even green beans that are underneath all that, uh, all that foliage and everything down under that bottom. Sometimes I'm picking green beans and I'm crawling around down in there and, and um, I'm waiting one day for a big snake to crawl out of there and then you're going to sound like a Cherokee Indian down in Houstonville. <laughs> And some of those green beans are full and they're plump, but you know what? They're yellow. Mm -hmm. Because they ain't got no sun. Yeah. Can't get no light. Yeah. And that's what we look like prancing to church on Sunday morning when we ain't been in the light all week. You're all yellow and frizzled up. Yes. <laughs> you think you look good, but you look a little puny. Yeah. But you know, in all seriousness, that dimness of life, that lack of light is a bigger dread to men's souls than, than the physical pain that they may face. They may not be able to recognize it. They may not be able to tell you that. But it is a bigger distress of their soul to live in darkness away from the light of God than it is to be in some kind of a physical ailment. And I would that God every morning would shine his light on us and it would be our desire to lean toward him and walk toward him and live in his light. Amen? Amen. That's my message to you this evening. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Will you stand with us all over the house?